Okay, here we go. Oh, how do I start this video? I'm going to make a video about God, and uh, <laughs> it's almost absurd to even talk about this thing, this subject, but uh, I had some, uh, let's just say I take it as a synchronicity, you know, I take my viewers' comments seriously. I read every single comment viewers leave, even if I can't respond to all of them, which kind of pains me, because I know my wife reads actually every comment, too. And she'll say that, oh, I feel so bad for people when they leave a really long, heartfelt comment and you don't respond to it. And I'm like, I do. It just takes me time. And sometimes they do slip through the cracks. But, uh, you know, even her knowing how busy our lives are with the kids and life and everything and work, you still got to find time for people. And uh, when it comes to religion or belief, you know, it's one of the issues that people really have a heartfelt connection to. You know, a person could say, hey, how do you feel about Kratom? or how do you feel about the drug war, or how do you feel about politics, or Trump, or anything, and I could give you an answer somewhat, but when it comes to what is God to you, um, the question doesn't arise all that often, but considering how often I mention Kratom in my video, or how often I mention God in my video, shows what I'm thinking, Kratom, I just made a video about Kratom before this, uh, how often I mention religion in my videos, that it would lead a person to say, what exactly are your beliefs? And the reason why I don't usually give them is because I feel, what good are my beliefs to someone else? What point is it for me to share how I feel about God? But people ask. So, <clears throat> I'm here to give my best definition of what I think God is, or whether I even believe in God. <coughs> I want to start by saying that dogma has religion so wrapped on, 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 around its finger that uh, there's no way for me to take religion as an organization seriously, any one particular religion. Um, if I'd been brought up as a Christian, I'd probably be a Christian. If I was brought up as a Muslim, I'd probably be a Muslim. I shouldn't even say probably, it's just what I mean is possibly. And, uh, and then there are the exceptions, people who were brought up in different races, different cultures, different beliefs, and who switched or changed, and who are just trying to find a basic answer to their lives, a basic understanding to why am I here, who am I, what is this world about, where am I going, where did I come from, do I continue on forever? And when you break down the philosophy to the basic components of what religion is, it's trying to answer the question of, am I really going to lose everything I have? Am I really going to die and forget everything? And so I'm here to give my opinion on what this means to me as quickly as I possibly can without going into too much detail. I believe the universe is conscious. I believe it's aware. I believe that the universe is a brain. Okay? And that's just set that in your mind. That's the whole, the whole whatever it may be, however large it may be, whether it's infinite, whether it's just a multi a universe within a multiverse which then it wouldn't be a universe it would be one of the multiverses <clears throat> i don't like to get into the deeper philosophy of what's beyond this universe but rather take this universe that we know and say what is it it's a conscious mind uh, synapses are firing between planets neurons electromagnetism whatever you want to call it it's all of these forces including dark matter and dark energy which makes up 98 percent of the universe I realize it's pointless to try to define it and understand it. What makes sense is to try to comprehend it through the self, through the individual. And this is what alchemy originally started as, an idea of transmuting <coughs> the mentality of man to where you can, uh, well, you can overcome obstacles, you can transgress negativity and oppression by seeing things for what they are, by saying when a person commits a heinous act, it's not about focusing on how heinous the act was, but rather what type of understandings will mankind find through that, whether it be a mass shooting or natural disaster. You want to blame someone, it could be a person. Uh, if somebody does something horrible, we can blame that person. If nature does something horrible, we can blame nature, but we can't really place a direct blame because nature is what we consider an inert or unaware medium, that nature just does what it does. So, we ascribe a god to it, to say, well, when nature does something, when nature destroys people's lives with a storm, when there's a, a whole town full of god-fearing, praying Christians, and then they get wiped out by a flood, they must have done something wrong. And this is where the absurdity of religion, um, <coughs> this is why I feel the way I do about it. 
um, that it doesn't cover the basic understanding of we are here, we don't quite get it, we are never going to quite understand the full jewel, we can only see from our facet, if you will. And what's really important for me, I guess, is to not try to prove anything. I was watching a show earlier about, uh, well, listening to a show earlier about apologetics and, uh, um, and apologists, if you will. And generally this is associated with religion, but apologists are ones who try to explain and reason and use reason and reasonable arguments to defend their position of religion. So you could, people confuse this with evangelism. Evangelism is preaching without any, without a person giving a shit about whether you believe them or care or not, whether you, they don't need to have any evidence. Uh, the evangelists, for example, would be the ones who say, God is real, it says so in the Bible, if you can't see that, you just must not be there yet. And those who are apologists would be more trying to explain it and saying, well, this might be the truth because of this and this and this. And um, I heard someone a while back say, you know, put it in a way I can't really rekindle that exact, you know, method he conveyed it. But he said, <coughs> it's offensive. He says, it's offensive for me, for someone to tell me that Joe Bob down there in the trailer park, who is a totally abusive jerk, is somehow forgiven and is going to go to heaven, um, and even just by saying, you know, Jesus forgive me. Whereas I've spent my whole life studying and trying to understand the world. I've spent my whole life trying to understand religion, and I've sat on my knees and prayed to God and said, if you're out there, show you to myself, show show yourself to me, and. And I haven't had the same experience that he claims to have where he says, well, if you truly pray to God and truly feel this way, then he'll come to you and reveal himself, or Jesus, rather. And uh, this is this is the argument that many Christians portray. And, and I'm not new to this. I've, I've gone through several. I had a subscriber that was, we discussed religion for a year or more. And uh, one day we got down to the bare bones of it. And he said, well, have you accept Jesus into your heart? And I said, you know what? Just for the sake of you, I sat in quiet solitude and asked Jesus to come into my heart and fulfill me. I have had more fulfillment through sitting in meditation or through a psychedelic experience. And his response would be the same as most Christians in that point, which is, you're not truly believing it. And that is the fallacy, the circle of belief, that if you want to believe, ask God into your heart. If he doesn't come into your heart, it means you don't truly believe. This is the problem I have with religion in general, and the reason why I don't try to defend my point of view or try to argue with those who are religious anymore is, is simple. It's a waste of my energy. Um, I would love to say that, you know, it's worth trying to convert people one way or another, but it's not. To me, even if I could convert those who are religious to non-religion, I wouldn't want to. And I'll tell you why. Because I have just as much of a problem with the atheists who actually, if you associate yourself as an atheist, if your goal is to go to an atheist website, if you spend any time whatsoever going out and claiming to be an atheist, you've, what is the fucking point? Pardon my language, but it, it's, it seems like I've met more atheists who are out trying to just dismiss religion as a whole, and they become arrogant, caucus, pious, um, and I enjoy listening to some of them. Richard Dawkins is very intelligent. Sam Harris... Letters to a Christian Nation is the book he wrote. I've listened to the whole thing several times on audiobook. I'm very well versed in all of these different aspects of religion and humanity and atheism, and I see people bonding together on both sides. And for me, the universe is conscious. God is so obvious that there's no point in trying to prove it. And there's no point in trying to anthropomorphize it and put it into a format where you can see it and understand it because you can't understand it. That's what I believe. So, when I've had so many people ask me, it's so important to them, they say, do you define as an atheist? And I say, well, you know, I don't like to use wordplay, and then they'll just, no, you either are an atheist or you're not an atheist, and they'll give all these technical, you know, a checklist, basically, for what I am, and I'll say, if it's that important that you define what I am, then maybe you have to look a little bit at what you are. 
Because I'm not out here trying to figure out what individual people stand for, or, you know, that's their life. I know we all go to bed at night and fight in our own dreams and have our own realities and wake up and do things our own way, and it's not a matter of trying to prove anything to people. But at a point, people get frustrated by the way that religion <coughs> misrepresents those who are not religious by saying, well, if you don't believe in this God, well, you just haven't done your research. Oh, you need to read the Bible. I'll tell you, I have several copies of the Bible. I've got, uh, you know, the, the uh, condensed versions of the Kabbalah and parts of the, you know, Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, like when a you know, Jehovah's Witness came to my door a while back, I asked him that. Have you read these other books? And he said, no, I wouldn't read those. I said, why not? And he says, because we're told not to. So that's the problem. If you aren't willing to be confronted on what you believe and actually look at it honestly, then that's your choice. But you can't expect other people to take you seriously without actual evidence. And this is what has happened with uh, many, many people out there. They really want to believe what they have. It's the truth, the one truth, and that's it. And I'll tell you, it's complete fucking bullshit. Pardon my language, but... All of these people claiming to have the one truth are full of shit. Because none of them have been able to show without a doubt that this is really the way. That this is going to work for everyone. It's like I've said about diets, about drug use, about herbs and medicines and food. All of these different things, we react differently to based on our genetics and where we were brought up, our ancestors. It's no different with religion. Religions were formed in areas where it was specifically needed to have a certain law within a book. For example, the reason why Muslims can't eat pork? Because swine or pigs are animals that only eat mostly uh, the same food as the humans eat, in other words, mostly human diet, uh, very similar to it. And they don't produce milk, and they only produce meat once. They don't produce wool or anything to keep you warm. So they were considered wasteful animals, and so by including that in the Quran, that eating pork was a sin, they were able to uh, eliminate much of the desire for, for ranchers at the time, farmers, ranchers, to have pigs. Um, it's just many historical reasons why these books had what they had in them. And I'm not disputing that these books are helpful, because in fact I've been told by even some of the greatest philosophers that the Bible is one of the greatest books that a man could possibly want to read. And I'm in the process of reading it slowly. I read Revelation when I was 16, because I was fascinated with the end times. But uh, I, I really want to understand it on a different level. The problem is that you have to look at between the lines and look at the metaphors. And in fact, if you can't read Hebrew, you can't understand that the language, is, the language of Hebrew, the letters, are designed to represent the sounds that they make. And those sounds are designed to represent parts of humanity, which is why... Religions like Judaism and the Kabbalah uh, and Gematria and the study of numbers and symbols and uh, uh, geometry are more than just some type of mysterious you know, search for understanding. They're closer to the truth than anything I've ever seen. Reading and understanding how we associate numbers and, you know, and so this is actual evidence you can look at. You can look at some of these, you know, the Judaistic teachings, and I'm not a supporter of of Judaism. Don't don't get me wrong, I completely am not a supporter of Israel, but I do believe that all Jews, and that's the problem, that I even have to make that disclaimer, that people are so at odds about Jews, and Christians, and Muslims, that we can't realize that everyone's just trying to find a system that helps them understand the world around them. So in a nutshell, this video wasn't long, or it was long, I couldn't get it short, and uh, that what God means to me is being able to look at every single angle of life, to be able to look at it honestly, to be able to discuss it with people, to be able to associate and relate with a group of people, yet still be an independent. Religion to me, what God is, is this. It's everything. We are living God, but we are tentacles of experience that will only experience this reality once for the universal mind to put in its stock of memories for what they call Akasha, for the Akashic Records, which is merely just the idea that time doesn't exist. Eliminate the word Akasha and say, everything that happens, the information is accessible right now for all of us. 
So I believe in deeper dimensions, you know, um, higher beings. And I would say to, to, you know, to answer the question, if I believe in a God, since I believe in the universal mind as a whole God, then I believe that there are smaller gods, which may be solar systems, galaxies, perhaps super galaxy clusters, and even mega galaxy clusters that we're not even aware of yet because we don't see shit in space. I mean, we're very limited. I mean, you can focus in on one tiny section of the sky and spend fucking years studying it. It's huge out there, guys. It's fucking huge. There is so much going on out there that we have no clue about. And we're looking at pictures through space that, we, you know, that uh, where that light came off millions of years ago. It's just, it's absurd, you know. What's important to us is to find that we belong and to believe that we belong. And in my opinion, we belong and we're right where we're supposed to be and we're doing exactly what we're supposed to do, whatever that may mean. But it's an individual plight. And so I don't think that humans should eliminate God. I don't think we should have any desire to eliminate the belief in a higher power. I believe that we also shouldn't give up our belief to a higher power or use a scapegoat like Satan, which is a subject I didn't even bring in. But this is when people do bad things. We bring in a separate entity as a responsible, a responsible party for this. And uh, it's non-productive. It doesn't go anywhere. And even a couple hundred years ago, we were burning people at the stake for having uh, seizures because we thought they were witches. And we come to find out now that these poor, poor motherfuckers with epilepsy were being killed and maimed and tortured because we thought they were witches. And so we wonder what type of heresy are we going to look at in the future and say, oh my god, how ignorant were we? So, it's not a matter of abolishing religion, we can't make it illegal, it would be stupid to do so. It's a matter of saying, people need to work this out through a few generations on their own and realize that the God is within them, that the power is within you, and you can get that same feeling that you get through your asking Christ for help, through asking Krishna for help, through asking Siddhartha, Buddha for help, any number of metaphors that represent the greater whole or the universal consciousness. So I hope I've explained that as best I can, and uh, that's my version of God. So, peace and love, everybody, and I'll uh, talk to you soon.